Hey folks, so here I am today and I'm joined by two of my very, very good friends, Fox and Al, and they've kindly come up to see me and stay at a mystery location, which nobody knows unless you're those four people that have found it. Stalkers. <laughs> yeah. Not including us, obviously. No, no, well you did find me, thankfully, <laughs> but I wanted you to. Because you gave us your address. I did, so you could come here and... Yeah, could... fi- finding okay. someone's address online. <clears throat> it's not consensual address giving. <laughs> Especially when it's really hidden as well. Yeah. yeah, it's not cool. Stop doing it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're, we're actually here to make a, a vlog and a podcast and, and so on, but <clears throat> we're also here to make a, like a short film for part of our series called Trans And. Um, so yeah, watch this space and it should be out quite soon. We shot some really good footage and interviews and things. Yeah, so, and we yeah, got to try out a drone for the first time as yeah, well, which is nice. exciting. Yeah. yeah. We were like flying That's the cool. drone and we couldn't see it anymore and everyone was like, where's the <laughs> drone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm blown away by drone technology. Yeah. It's just quite mm-hmm. incredible. So, um, that's the small talk over. Let's have some big talk. Okay, let's do it. Right. <laughs> so, we were discussing some things last night over dinner, and um, <clears throat> one of those things really was the dynamics of telling people you're trans and when sometimes you do want to tell people, sometimes you don't, and then the kind of the whole other situations and scenarios that can kind of come out of those situations. That's right. And we were talking about how at the, the beginning of transition, what, what I noticed and what you noticed as well is that mm. you kind of, I tended to give it all away. I would like, I'd be like, you know, even yeah. when I didn't need to, I'd be like, oh, by the way, I'm trans. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and it does it's like walk to... into a shop and like, hi, hi I'm trans. <laughs> I like an umbrella and I'm trans. <laughs> okay, I just want everybody to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to diffuse that one right now. <laughs> yeah. But actually, it's not always necessary. And, yeah. and if, you know, sitting on this couch, like we're all mm. really out trans people, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like if you Google any of us, yeah. you find... It's, all it's sorts pretty... of rubbish about us. Yeah. yeah. All sorts of rubbish. <laughs> I find a bunch of threads on mums and they're discussing how gross we are. And... But yeah. also, <laughs> also some lovely articles and interviews about, you know, what you're yeah. doing with racing and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and also your column in the Metro and all sorts of things that yeah, we're doing, awesome. you know, to try. And the reason <clears throat> I'm out is because I, I, when I came out as trans, I realised I was coming out uh, into a world that they didn't really understand trans issues at all and, mm-hmm. and I thought well that's got to change so the only way to implement change is to be visible mm-hmm. um, if you feel safe to do so obviously because sure. there's a large number of our community that don't feel comfortable doing that and that's totally okay as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know for me when I was uh, in the early days of my transition it was very easy to just kind of out myself at any opportunity because mm-hmm. I, I think you know people could tell I was trans probably just from looking at me and the way I presented. Mm -hmm. Um, That awkward stage, you know, yeah. Yeah, and it was was easier for me to, you know, just to kind of get it out there and just... uh, The elephant in the room. The elephant in the room. And also as a way to help kind of educate people as well because Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just a common thing, isn't it? That so Mm -hmm. many people actually don't or haven't knowingly met a trans person. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You know, I always find that's quite an interesting dynamic now when I meet people who, in situations where they obviously don't know I'm trans, mm-hmm. and they probably don't know, you know, they people cis people perhaps don't realise about all the trans people they meet. That's right. They never because, they've never knowingly met a trans person before, yeah, even yeah. though they probably have. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Chances yeah. are. They we have. think about this all the time, especially when we're we're travelling and when we, for example, you know, you help someone carry a bag down the stairs, or mm-hmm. when you're on the train and you sit across someone and you start speaking to them. We wonder, like all the time, like if these people would know we're trans. If they treat us differently. Would they react differently? Would yeah. their reaction be different? And we've been mm. we had a situation recently on the train where we. Yeah. Um, there was this elderly mm. couple that was sitting across from us and the woman was having some sort of anxiety issues yeah. and she you know started speaking to us just to sort of calm herself down and explain um, why she was like you know, yeah because she was she was like visibly and physically uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Yeah. and uh, and she started speaking to us and you know she was gonna visit her son or something and then she, she started that, yeah. yeah she started asking us like what we do and why we were you know up in London and and we told her that we had just had a book event and we just published a book and she started Mm -hmm. inquiring more about the book and at this point in time we were like do we just tell her that we made a book about trans teens and that we're trans people or do we just sort of 
not tell her and just sort of vaguely say it was like a youth related book. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And you can find yourself in so many of those situations, I think, mm -hmm. with people, can't you? Where you're yeah. like, you have, you actually do make that conscious decision of like, oh, it's just easier to say this. Or you go, yeah, well, it's all about being trans and, you know, we're trans. And yeah. then it opens up like a whole kind of, yeah. a, a, I don't know, like a dialogue, I suppose. Yeah, it? definitely. And I think yeah. that's what we find nine times out of ten, that when you do make yourself vulnerable like that and you talk mm -hmm. about it, you know, they'll often say, oh, well, I was reading something about that recently and I was yeah. wondering what the deal was. Or I've got a cousin mm -hmm. who's just come mm -hmm. out as trans and, mm -hmm. you know, people are starting to have... Yeah. a better understanding of what trans people are actually like as opposed yeah. to the horrible media mm. representation of what yeah. trans people are like. Yeah, and we decided to tell this couple on the train that we were actually yeah. trans. I just, I just decided to go for it. And mm. um, and they were both really amazed. Yeah. And the guy was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And he was like really excited about the book. He was like, kudos, good on you. Yeah. 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 And, and, and she was like, oh, our, our son is gay, you know. And she like, <laughs> oh. was trying to kind of, yeah, connect. Yeah. And yeah. so we were like, okay, that wasn't so bad. But, you know, we we, we didn't speak about it because you know obviously they're having a conversation with us but I think it was going through both our minds you know mm, yeah. at what point do we reveal this mm -hmm. do we need to um, you know and even for, for people who are like some of the most out trans people you know in yeah. the UK yeah. I'd, I'd guess um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. you know we still have that that choice you know day to day mm -hmm. whether we do want to come out to people mm -hmm. yeah. because we have that passing privilege as well and that's that's an interesting yeah. topic yeah. unto itself yeah. Yeah. What, what does that really mean and, and yeah. And, and I think, like you said just then, like you know, for two, two of the probably the most visible out trans people in the UK, you, you still have that dynamic, like that never mm -hmm. goes away. Right. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Even w wherever you are in your life, that yeah. will kind of be a thing that you that, that's that's with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even though you've been on TV, on the radio, mm -hmm. and you've been very public, you still have to come out to people all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Or not. You <laughs> or know. Not. You have. Well, if you have the choice of doing that, because mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Some trans people, as you said, don't have the passing privilege of, of being seen as cis, uh -huh. uh, whereas others yeah. do for some reason. And sometimes trans people pass in certain situations and then in others they don't. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's quite interesting that I've, I mean, the, the further on it's been in my transition, the less any sort of misgendering or anything sort of has happened to me. But I remember at the start that it was quite difficult for me to pass mm -hmm. and people me would too. always constantly know that I was trans, mm. but it, it's changed a lot throughout the past 10 years since I've started transitioning. Do you remember one of the first moments when you realised that you were actually passing? Because I, I remember quite distinctly, um, I was living at the Artist Residence Hotel because I was, um, I had an, a residency there and I was living there for about six months mm. and um, I, <clears throat> I was just kind of hanging about and I think I was preparing for my solo show and there was a guest that was staying at the hotel who was a gay guy and he um, was quite kind of taken by me and he was like, oh, you're a very beautiful boy. Um, you know, I've got this, um, he said, I belong to this drawing club and we invite we invite beautiful boys um, to come along. To, <laughs> to draw them. To draw them, to come to this like a great How manor convenient. house. Yeah, I know. And I was like, what? I, I, knew, I knew exactly what he Oh my god. But that I was is like the most intrinsic like pickup line in the yeah, world. Yeah, like, I oh know. we invite yeah, beautiful boys to come and be drawn naked. Why don't you come along? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> But I was very flattered, okay. you know, because yeah. I was like, wow, this guy sees me as, as you know, masculine and yeah. that's huge. And he couldn't see mm. me in any other light, you know, he really, you know, and he was like, how old are you? And I told him how old I was and he was like, oh, well, I know someone else who, who um, is your age but looks really young as well, like that. And, and you're like, are they trans too? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, and he really wanted me to go there, but obviously I think he would have had a bit of a shock if I'd, you know, taken all the clothes off so they could draw me, so, yeah. yeah Maybe just... you should have done that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. How about you, Charlie? Do you remember? When I actually had those first moments when I was like, oh my god, I just passed. And, yeah, um... I don't know. Um, it was just little, like just really tiny <clears throat> things. Like yeah, it, it, I mean, it was funny because like I used to spend a lot of time in, in my job at, at that point in time on the phone, so I used to get to practice my voice a lot. Right. Mm. And that was quite interesting in itself because I could try different things with my voice. Yeah. I remember at one point I had this very breathy Joanna Lumley type of. Oh. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and this, I remember this guy saying to me, he was like, Oh, Ooh, your voice. So is, I could just lie down in a dark room and listen to that all day. <laughs> wow. There's and a I whole like, career for you oh, out there. Wow. <laughs> Thank <like>, you. <laughs> yeah. And I need to, maybe I should resurrect that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should do some low key sex work with or, like, or, um, <laughs> with like a voice, and people be like, Oh, that's a very nice well, voice. It sounds very <laughs> ASMR, actually. There's yeah, a whole market actually, for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, ASMR channel coming 2019. That's Get ready right. for the launch. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> but I think uh, that I, I think I actually learned to pass on the phone before I could pass face to face with people. Wow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think the real game changer for me was was FFS because mm. that that was just such a day and night shift oh, wow. between those two. I think I've you know I passed sometimes before that uh-huh. but but you know it was always it was always a bit of touch and go. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, Yeah, we have a friend who uh, is mm. in her seventies now and she said when she had FSS she only had minimal things changed, just like these small things with her forehead and maybe with her jaw. And yeah. she said instantly <clears throat> by making these really subtle changes yeah. everybody <clears throat> suddenly saw her as a woman. It it was really like that for me yeah. and I remember like because of the timing, it coincided with me. Um, I did my first year of racing where I went back as trans, oh. and then I had FFS. And it was really fascinating actually seeing how people reacted to me. Yeah. Because mm. the first year I had like a small group of friends who were really like in the class that I raced in, who were really cool and. Mm. Quite protective, I'd imagine, or, yeah, or just, yeah. Yeah, and I think they. But a lot of the other people around me in the paddock, you're talking maybe like, I don't know, 150 people. It's a lot of people, mm-hmm. yeah. Were quite standoffish. Right. But then I think the year when I came back and I'd had FFS, and I, and, and then even in like, the, that was something like November 2000 and, I don't know, 13 or something. Right. Mm-hmm. So in that time, I had, a, you know, four or five months after Christmas to suddenly be like, oh, I feel really good and actually I feel really confident yeah. suddenly <laughs> and happy. And I think that that just showed and people suddenly started reacting to me differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and it's, it's amazing the difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the whole package as well. It's like you feel mm-hmm. better about yourself. Yeah. Um, you're further down the line, I suppose, with hormones and, and things like that. And uh-huh. yeah. And then, of course, the surgery has it has a huge impact. But yeah. Yeah. So what did you find? Like, what, what did you notice about the difference of being like, the way that you were treated? You know, I, I guess people just there was no, I didn't feel like there was any kind of elephant in the room or any kind of mm. stigma quite so much suddenly. Right. I think mm. people, I felt like people suddenly view, started viewing me as female. It's it's almost and as s- if they became comfortable with the way you look, which is yeah. really, really yeah. strange. And people yeah. can't treat you nicely if something mm. about your expression makes them uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. But as soon as you yeah. fall into that stereotype, people are like, oh, okay, yeah. you're better, which is so... It's sad Tell, in a telling way. of it, how we treat yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, that's just like yeah. it's, it's 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 so unfortunate that that sort of social dynamic exists yeah. because um, you know obviously for a lot of people they don't have access to FFS. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was lucky that I remortgaged my house wow. to pay for it. Yeah, you because because you don't get that for free on the NHS here yeah. in, yeah. in England. I'm still paying for it now, and I will be for some time. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not a yeah. You do get um, it on the NHS in Scotland though. Actually, yeah, you do, yeah. don't you? Yes, all the trans people are going to move to Scotland now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, you do what you have to do, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't remember a particular moment when I when I started passing. I think it was more gradual for me, mm-hmm. but I think even before I started to transition, sometimes people would assume I was a girl, yeah. which mm-hmm. is really interesting, and especially over the phone. If I was speaking to people on the phone, and I would be, for example, in my parents' house, and I would answer the phone, people would assume I was my mom. Wow. So I would pass all the time randomly in random situations and then in others not. So it was really sporadic how it sort of happened. But as my transition came more along, I started passing like fully as something that people saw as a woman. Now, I would think that would be quite an unusual experience because <clears throat> you both are saying that you had you kind of passed on the phone beforehand. And don't you think that's quite mm-hmm. unusual for a, for a trans feminine experience? It is actually. because, you know, yeah. a lot of people go through what do you call it when your voice drops? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, and a lot of people get deeper voices from that. So it is quite mm-hmm. un- uh, uncommon, I think, for, 
for trans women or trans feminine people to pass on their voice along. Because no yeah. no amount of hormones <clears throat> is going to change yeah. mm-hmm. your, your, you know, yeah. your voice. I mean, unless you have some sort of surgery, you cannot change your voice, basically. Yeah. I mean, it, it was something, when I knew I was going to start transitioning, I actually thought, because was, there was probably six months before me deciding to try okay this is it it's yeah. happening right and then actually starting to live full time right so even at that early stage i was like right what's going to be a really critical thing voice yeah and i started working on it even then wow uh, i had some some really helpful um sessions with a voice um Therapist. Therapist. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Christella and Tony, actually, mm-hmm. if anyone's looking for somebody to work with who's really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it made a big difference to me, I think. Yeah. Because your confidence uh, and yeah, yeah, and just just even like being able to go into a shop, I remember all the situations prior to, to, to feeling comfortable with my voice. Uh-huh. Where I would go into a, a shop or, or any kind of situation mm-hmm. where I'd, I'd be thinking, can I do this without actually talking to the people or can I you know <laughs> yeah. what how can yeah. I kind of structure the situation the dynamic mm-hmm. so that I just have to say like a couple of things <clears throat> because yeah. as soon as they hear my voice mm. they they're just going to like oh we, you know know that I'm trans right so, I, w- I want to this, yeah. so convoluted those kinds of ways you try to create things yeah. to, to get around that yeah and it, and it feels <clears throat> like it feels horrible doesn't it because there's so much to think about and it could be quite an anxious time you know yeah. for you because you've got all these mm-hmm. things that you're just like worried about and anxious mm-hmm. about and mm-hmm. yeah I, I there's remember, no way to live yeah. no. I remember a situation where I was working in a shop at a cashier and um, and I was you know putting the um the groceries through and then and I you know I say would you like anything else blah, blah, blah. and the woman just turns to me and she says are you a boy or a girl and this was after oh I started transitioning I was obviously presenting in a feminine way what's if you just asked somebody that I know, I know that's and outrageous I, and I was just like um I'm a girl and she was just like oh I was just wondering because your voice is a bit weird wow and I was just like who who the are you? Fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry. Where do you like? I said something like, Oh, that's weird. So, and she was like, Oh, I was, I was just wondering because I'm a teacher at school and blah blah. blah. And I was like, What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. She, just, she okay. just started like it's unraveling just a weird way. Like, yeah. And I was wow. just like. I was, and I think I said something like, do you ask people that a lot? Well, that's good that you did. <laughs> I'm glad you did yeah. ask that. She's just like, no, actually, yeah. I don't. I was like, no, because it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> Maybe she goes like, hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Are you a boy or are you a girl? How's the weather today? You know, are you a boy or a girl? Okay, a common question for you, because then I won't take it as personally. But, you know, if, yeah. if this isn't a common thing for you, surely you can see why this would be uncomfortable for people. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, I feel like now I have so much confidence mm. that if somebody mm. did ask me something like that, mm. it just... It wouldn't affect me and I'd laugh at them, but you feel so vulnerable at the start of your transition. You feel yeah. like you can't stand up for yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you only think about what you could have said later on. And <laughs> I, I still cringe at the way I would situate, the way I reacted to situations right. now, thinking mm-hmm. back when I'm like, now I would just be like, sorry, who, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's quite funny that um, before I transitioned, people <clears throat> refused to really see me as a man and I'd be like a sissy or a fag or a pansy or, or even like a woman. But after I transitioned, I have never been called man more. <laughs> Like, n- people call me man more now than even before I transitioned, which wow. is quite yeah. interesting. And it's usually usually transphobic people or people on yeah. mom's net on Twitter or something that call me man basically every day. Wow. But this mm-hmm. never happened before I transitioned. So it's, like, it's really interesting to see how before everybody was like, oh, you're not a real man. And, you know, and then I transitioned. Everybody was like, oh, you're not a real woman or anything. You're still a man. Mm-hmm. And it's just yeah, like it's so it's backwards the way people judge you. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. yeah. It's outrageous. It it's like which is it people? Yeah. It's like make up your fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean I guess the joke's on them since I'm a non binary person anyway. So like, yeah. Somebody was saying the other day that non um, non binary identification is like the kryptonite of the trans world because you can kind of you can you can use it, you know, because often the um, the arguments that people have, you know, like oh you're mm-hmm. not you'll never be a woman. You're like well that's okay because I'm non-binary. Or you'll never be a man. <laughs> yeah. well, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. People do that on Twitter with me too. They're like you'll never be a woman. You're okay. not a woman. I was like I'm not even trying to be. This <laughs> is like thanks. Okay. Yeah. I, I sometimes get occasional comments in my YouTube videos when 
I mean, I, I you know, I don't tend to, to like really check them out and that much, but I'll just see some comments someone's put, and um, it, it's like, yeah, you know, like real rant, uh-huh. where they're like, oh, I, you know, God damn it, you'll never be a woman, you're not a woman, <laughs> Gerald. And I'm just like, like thanks, Gerald. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Well, you're right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, oh sure. man, Maybe. that's really annoying. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God, oh, it just that's like, just ruined my day. Yeah. yeah. I just I just love how people think that their opinion matters yeah. in this context. <laughs> it's like no one cares what you think. Like yeah. I'm not gonna change just because you don't think I'm a woman or you don't think I'm a man. It's just uh, like... And when was the last time <laughs> any of us went out of our way to uh, write abuse on someone's? I know. You know video or a comment somewhere like we just don't do that you I, know? and I don't mean that obviously like I do read comments on my YouTube from fans and followers and obviously. I do really appreciate them <laughs> what I meant by that is I don't go looking for negativity that people put on my no. exactly content. it's life life's it's too short sure. yeah. 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 yeah yeah share the love put negativity <laughs> yeah. get out of town <laughs> exactly. like, yeah. I guess we should probably uh finish on that positive note so for sure yeah um thank Life's you too short yeah negativity down. Last, yeah, yeah down with negativity i don't care i don't want to hear your negativity get out of it get out of it yeah I'm all about down positivity. With, yeah down with gender policing that's it yeah no more all right cool well, folks thank you so much for joining me it's been a pleasure thanks charlie and for um I, I only just feel slightly surprised that my cat has not made a cameo appearance in this because she's been all over us all weekend she has she was like in my face this morning where she was like hi i want some food can you give me food <laughs> I, I would just vibrate in your head i know so you could so funny. I know. Uh, she's so cute okay folks well let's wrap that up and uh as always please subscribe comment below and um, check out my content. I try to post it every week on a Wednesday at 8 o'clock um, yeah. to the best of my ability. Oh, so. and if you want to check out any more of us as well, we're on yes. forward slash <laughs> fox and owl. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also make films, which you should see Charlie's film on in a few months, on My Generation. So forward slash My Generation. You see can find there? us on Twitter and Facebook and all these social media places. Absolutely. Bye. Thanks guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha